corrugated board is a little-known but frequently used packaging material. Many items that we find in the supermarket, as well as many other things from technical devices to heavy machinery, are packed in this 100% recyclable material. Even for hazardous goods, corrugated board is the packaging material of choice. To meet the different requirements of individual products, corrugated board comes in different thicknesses. A distinction is made here by grammage of the paper used, types of paper, flute height, and the number of flutes. About 60% of corrugated board produced worldwide is single wall, about 30% double wall, and a small proportion is also triple wall. So what is it we need to manufacture corrugated board? Actually, this requires only paper, starch, glue, and energy in the form of steam, as well as electricity. And, of course, a corrugator from the market leader BHS Corrugated from Bavaria in Germany. Such a corrugator can be up to 180 meters long. Depending on their structure, the processed papers may be up to 3.35 meters wide. Modern corrugators run at an average speed of 250 meters per minute and maximum production speeds run at up to 450 meters per minute. Even with a corrugator producing at 250 meters per minute, in just one hour, eight football fields could be covered with corrugated board. So how does paper become a box? At first, the paper goes through what is called the wet end of the corrugator. Here, it is first fed through the individual machines of the reel stand and splicers and then into the preheaters and preconditioners where it is heated. The preheated paper, known as corrugated medium, then feeds into the single facer, where two steam-heated corrugating rolls give it its corrugated form. In the glue unit of the single facer, each flute tip then has an ultra-thin coat of starch glue applied to it. The fluting is then glued to the second preheated paper, known as the liner. The single-faced corrugated web produced this way is transported in loops via the bridge and stored there. In the glue unit, the free flute tips are likewise coated with a layer of glue. This side too is then glued in the double facer to another paper, known as the double facer liner paper. This will later form the outside of the packaging. To produce double or triple wall corrugated board, as described previously, two or three single face corrugated webs are glued to each other. After the double facer, the board enters the dry end of the corrugator, where the endless corrugated board is then fed through an automatic slitter scorer. Here the corrugated board is slit to the width required and scored to ensure exact folding of the box later on. It is then fed through a cutoff knife, which cuts the corrugated board to the exact length required. The cutting sheets are then stacked in the automatic stacker. To meet the requirements of corrugated board packaging, particular quality demands must be fulfilled. The corrugated board must be well bonded and come out of the corrugator flat. This is particularly important, so that in later processing the corrugated board can be printed, slotted, stamped and folded flawlessly. To meet these requirements, the technicians working on corrugated board must undertake the correct machinery adjustment given the corresponding paper compositions. The finished stacks are then taken via conveyor belts for further processing outside the corrugator, where they are processed into finished packaging. Following delivery to the customer, for example, a food manufacturer, the packaging is usually filled automatically and then ends up in the supermarket for us, the end consumers. And the best part, corrugated board is 100% recyclable. And after its life in the supermarket is done, it is reprocessed into paper and fed once again into corrugated board production.